Uh, question one. Computers depreciating start at a certain value and it loses value over time, right? So this is like the flip side of a compound interest situation, yeah? Instead of things getting bigger because we're saving money, um, things are getting less and less valuable. Now we're getting this number here, 648. I deliberately did not ask you guys to write working here, but where does that number come from? Where, where, what are we actually putting into our calculator to get this number? Sorry. Um, the formula is A. Yep, which is, what, what did we say it was for? 3,000. 3,000, sorry, yep. So 3,000 and then times the bracket. Yep. Uh, 1 minus 0 0.4 mm -hmm. to the power of 3. Okay, fantastic. Well done. So this is it's our compound interest formula, but for depreciation, we've got this one subtle difference, a minus instead of a plus, so things are getting lower and lower in value. Um, Mrs. Lee's already referred to the fact that even though it gets given to you as 40%, 0 0.4 is probably a better way to communicate that. And you, this is just mincemeat for your calculator. Okay? If it looks depressing to you that you're like, what? I only had it for three years? How is it worth so little compared to how much I spent on it? Um, Bu buckle up because depreciation is actually worse than that. Like for a computer, it'll lose value even faster than that, right? Um, and yeah, computers, they drop value very quickly. Okay? It actually was worth like 2,352, right? Because we're subtracting that amount. Oh, okay, good question. Are we taking this and then subtracting, or is this the answer? It, that is the well, that is how much is the computer worth after that much the, time? The formula. The formula uh, shows 40% compounded to that for three years, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, it's already doing a few after the three years, how much mm. from the one. Okay, okay. So, so just to, just to sort of get this, right? Uh, Serang's right. Um, the formula, I didn't actually write this, which is a bit sneaky. The formula for compound interest is A equals, and then there's stuff. And I actually did say I was going to do this last time and forgot. Sorry about that. Um, you know how this is sort of based on compound interest? What's the other kind of interest? Simple. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Yes, simple interest. I don't know if you remember. We didn't didn't dwell on it very much because it's not as relevant for our situations. Everything's pretty much compounding. But the simple interest formula still takes principal. It still takes a rate, and it still takes n, an amount of time. But it's very subtly different. It's not a equals. Does anyone remember how it starts? Yeah, it's i equals p r. N. Now this gets to sort of what Zachary was saying before. The simple interest formula gives you the difference, gives you the interest. But the compound interest formula, and therefore the depreciation formula, which is the same thing but in reverse, it actually gives you the amount, what you end up with, not the difference. Okay? Yeah, awesome. Happy with that one? Is that okay? Um, let's have a quick look at number three. So I gave you a series. What kind of series is it? Geometric. It's geometric. It has to be geometric because when they ask this question, what's the... Uh, limiting sum, APs, arithmetic progressions don't have limiting sums, right? No matter what the common difference is, okay? Now you actually have the formula for limiting sum, which gives you 54. You even have it on your reference sheet, but hopefully it's simple enough that you guys can remember it. What is it? A over 1 minus R. Fantastic, A over 1 minus R, which in this case, I think it's 36 on 1 minus a third. So you can multiply that through, you get that. Are you happy? All right, now, last one, just real quick that we're going to look at here, and then we're going to do some working for question four, because it's worth looking at. It's only what we did recently. You really had to think about this, and um, I, I unintentionally threw you a curveball earlier than I meant to. You're given an AP, arithmetic progression, right, and then asked to work out how many terms there are. Okay? Now, there's lots of different formulas that we can use when it comes to all these series and sequences, and using the right one ended up being decisive for a lot of you, because some of you went to, like, a formula and you're like, I can put stuff into this, but you didn't have all the pieces, okay? Bless you. I'm going to suggest that the place we start is t of n. Now, why would I go to t of n rather than s of n? t of n is your nth term, s of n is your sum of the first n terms, right? Have a look at the information that's been given to you. Um, you've got some terms, 31, 44, 57, and it ends at 226, okay? Now, I do not want to use s of n because it relies on me knowing what the sum is. And I don't know what the sum is. I could work it out. I could just go to my calculator. But that seems like it's unnecessary work. So I'm going to use this formula. For an AP, what is T of n equal to? Fantastic. OK, first term plus n minus 1 lots of that common difference. OK, now what we're trying to find is how many terms there are. Which pronoun rule is that? Which pronoun rule is that in here? How many terms are there? Have a think. It's, it's going to be n, right? 
This is the thing that I don't know, okay? But I know every other pronumeral that's on the line. Um, for instance, I know what A is. It's, what is it? I can't even remember. 31, 31. Um, there's my N minus 1. The common difference is 13. There's one last piece of information. This was the trickiest one, right? Where's that other, like, left-hand side come from? T of N. Where's that? 226. Yeah, very good. 226 will be my nth term, my last term. Okay, and then from here it's just some simple rearrangement. It's just some arithmetic. Um, do we get? Do we agree? N equals 16. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Now, as promised, we're going to do a bit of working for four, but I'm not going to finish the question out. I'm just going to do enough that you can get the answer. Um, quick show of hands. Who got an answer for question four? Any answer. I don't care whether it's right or not. Just an answer. <laughs> I got an answer, but I know it's wrong. Okay, thank you, hands down. Uh, you're not the only one, Sarang. Several people said to me, oh, I've got an answer, but it seems wrong. It's like 81,000 or something like that. You're like, that's, that's definitely wrong. What told you, because you, you don't have answers. I know you don't, because even I don't have answers. I didn't write anything for this yet. How did you know that was already wrong? 81,000. It's too low. It's too low, right? Sense check. Um, it works for seven years. What's the word that tells you there's a single word that indicates in the question that it's too low? It's total, right? So year one, year two, year three, all the way up to year seven, we've got to include them all. Okay? It's cumulative. Thank you. That's a good way to say it. So how do we work this out? Um, you can think about each year's salary separately, right? Um, what would be the first... Uh, don't use S because that's sum. Let's use A. No, I'm not even going to use that. I'm going to use T is a better way to do it. Term one. The first salary, what is it? 80,000. 80, right? When you have a look at the next one, after a year, so this is the next term along, right? It's going to be that same 80,000, but it's gotten bigger. By how much? 1.5%. Just like up here, I'm going to try and express that as a decimal. So that would be one point. Careful, careful. Yeah, 1.015. If you... um. If you're not sure about that, right? think about what percent means. It's division by 100. So if you pop 1.5 divided by 100 into your calculator, you'll get the 0 0.015 that trails on the end here. Is that OK? Right. And you have the next one, term three. I'm trying to establish a pattern here, right? What's it going to be? 80,000. 80,000? 1.015 I've got three terms. And then I'm going to say, well, I'm going to go all the way to the seventh year, right? I can follow the pattern. It's going to be 1.015. How many of them? Six. It's one less, isn't it? That's a one less than two. OK? Now, I want the total earnings. That's everything all added up. Several of us just worked out this last one here, right? So if I put these all together, what kind of thing do I end up with? I already had one earlier on. It's a geometric series, right? Uh, every term has, shares that common ratio, and it's just getting one bigger, one bigger, one bigger. I said I wouldn't do the final working, but I do want to remind you what the sum of a geometric progression is, right? I've got two formulas for it. Um, the one I'm going to suggest that we use, because we've been using it a bit, is this one. Why is this one more appropriate than the other one? Which one? This guy here. This is just off the reference sheet. Right? It's longer. Parent? The common ratio is bigger than one. Fantastic. This is the common ratio here, R. I'm trying to avoid negatives, yeah? So if I put R into here down the bottom, you can see I'll get something positive. If I did the other one, which has 1 minus R, you're going to get negatives. Is that OK? I'll leave that there. And um, you guys can go ahead and work out what the answer is.